I'm here with Jim Elliott from Arizona Cactus Sales, and Jim has brought this great saguaro out today for use in our job here. Jim, where do you get a saguaro like this? This particular plant is from uh, four miles north of Coolidge on private property, and that is the source for most cactus. Uh, they are, if they're on private property, they can be bought and sold. The, the option to get them from public lands doesn't exist. Uh, even with the land use changes, uh, the plants are being taken off and then recycled and used back in their vegetation efforts. Jim, there aren't a lot of roots on this cactus. How's it going to survive? Well, Pete, it will have to grow new roots. The roots that you see, the stubs that you see, have been carefully cut off, but these roots extended out from the plant 15, 20, 30 feet, and they follow an irregular pattern, kind of look like a lace doily. The, the water that the plant takes up is right on the surface. Now, the plant itself, the root wouldn't have any strength, so there's no use to carry it in. So we have to plant it like a telephone pole, and we'll put this in roughly 30 inches total. Now we got maybe 15 inches of original depth, so we'll lose another 15 inches of the green material. Mm -hmm. And it'll stay up, and it'll grow the new roots, and then that's where it'll take off from there. Well, while it's growing new roots, what's it gonna live on? It kind of has to eat out of the pantry. Most of the volume of this plant is filled with water in a gelatin form. And if you, that's one of the dangers of putting water around the plant is you get water on both sides of the skin and then the plant could rot. So it will lose some size, it will, it will shrink. And they seem to be extremely variable. Some of them hardly shrink at all, others get real skinny. But it does have to use its own resources until it can get the new roots established. Do you have to do any special treatment to these roots before you plant this then? Well, we do uh, a special treatment. We have a four-part mix. We use an antibiotic an antiseptic, uh, we, we also have a sticker that's on it, and uh, a disinfectant. And we spray them, when we bring them from the desert, we clean them, we spray them, plant them, then when we take them out again to deliver to you, that same process is repeated. That's where you get this kind of this turquoise. I can see some of that on here. Almost <laughs> on the plant. Like, yeah, like turquoise, okay. This is a pretty nice rig you got here. I've seen a lot of other cactus movers have this saddle similar to yours. Most of the time you can just back this truck right up to the hole and plant it, can't you? That's the easy, that's what we look forward to, is it's everything's under control and you just drop it straight down. Mm -hmm. Now our job here is a little bit more difficult. This cactus is gonna go inside a courtyard area over a wall. You can't drive the truck through the wall, so we brought this big crane out here today to be able to install the cactus but you've got a pretty neat saddle here. I guess you can remove this saddle from your truck and we can attach it to the crane and the crane can pick the saddle up because obviously the crane couldn't pick the cactus up without damaging it. Yeah, you've seen this operation before so you're very familiar with it. That's exactly what happens. The hydraulic pivots it to the vertical. The crane takes all the load off. We disconnect the hydraulic and pull the pivot pin and then we can take it to the hole. Um, we choose to use this system even though it's more cumbersome because the plant is always under control. Uh, with, a, with a wooden saddle, the plants are not uniform and when they pick them up they tend to spin and it's very, very dangerous. So this is much easier on the plant. Now once we get this installed, how much watering should we do on this? You probably won't do any, at least for the first calendar year. Then if the plant has, has dehydrated considerably, you may at that point, and I hesitate to say this because people take it out of context, you may, if it's terribly dehydrated, dig a very shallow well and give it five gallons once a week. And I can say that's kind of a quarter of last resort. And actually, we'll come out and make a service call before we'd ever recommend that anyone do that. Uh, I say that the, the danger of it rotting is a whole lot more than of it just drying up and blowing away. So where we're installing this, we're not gonna be putting any drip emitters on or near no. this cactus. No, you could put other plants, desert plants in there that had to be watered by hand once a month because people will forget and, and they won't be reliable. But the emitter system is too reliable. It'll come on every time and it'll soak it because this plant's gonna be as much as two and a half feet below ground level and when it stands with its feet in water, it just inevitably will rot. Well, where we've designed this, it is gonna be in another cactus garden area so there'll be other cactus around it. Yeah, and that's fine. That works great. Well, Jim, that was some pretty tricky positioning over the wall in this tight space and with the crane but this Saguaro's made a monumental change to the front of the house. Good job. Thanks a lot, Pete. It's always a pleasure working with you.